In this tutorial, we will take a look at the site settings section, which is basically the administrative area for a site. This tutorial is primarily for site owners and administrators. To get there, choose site actions and then site settings. We'll take a quick view of the settings that are available here. The first section is users and permissions, where you can work with site users, permissions, and groups. This is covered in detail in the Users and Permissions tutorial. Under the Look and Feel section, the first option is Title, Description, and Icon. This is where you can change the title for a site. The title is displayed at the top of the page in the site, and the description displays on the home page of the site. This home site is still using the default name, Team Site. I'm going to change this to Bioscope Technologies. And then I'll enter description just so you can see where that shows. Use the logo URL field to link to an image to replace the default image set up by SharePoint displayed in the top left next to the site name. As pointed out in the description, the recommended image size is 60 by 60 pixels. So if you have an image you would like to use, upload it to a picture library, copy the URL, and paste the URL in this box. And click OK to save. And here you can see the new site name displays at the top. Quick Launch is the left navigation of a site. By default, SharePoint groups the links to content in a site under headings as seen here for libraries, lists, and discussions. As we have seen in some other videos, when you create new content such as a list or subsite, you are given the option to add it to the Quick Launch. If you select Yes, SharePoint will add it under the appropriate heading or create a new heading if necessary. On this page, you can add a new heading, a new link under a heading, rename links or headings, and change the order of the links and headings. Let's say, for example, I'd like to rename the heading list to resources. So I'll click on the edit button, and in the description box, type in the new name. So I've typed in the new name. You can see you can also delete links from here as well. I'll choose OK to save the new name. And now you can see the new name appears in the Quick Launch. When I click on Change Order, each heading and link has a number next to it. Just change the number to change the order. I would like resources placed above libraries, so I'll change the number next to resources to number one. And then when I click OK, we'll see the change has been applied to the Quick Launch on the left here. To return to Site Settings, I'll go to Site Actions and Site Settings. Next, we'll take a look at top link bar. The top link bar refers to the top navigation of the site. You can add and remove tabs and change the name of tabs. You can also change the order of the tabs from here. Just like the quick launch, if I click on the edit button for one of the existing tabs, I could change the name or I could completely delete it. In the web part page tutorial, we use this top link section to add a tab to the employee directory page that we had created. And I'll return to site settings. Tree view also has to do with the left navigation of the site. It shows multiple levels of subsites and all of their contents, such as lists and libraries. The first option in this screen is the ability to enable or disable Quick Launch. The default is that Quick Launch is enabled. And you can enable Tree View from here, which I will do, and then I'll choose OK. And I'll return to the home page. Notice below the Quick Launch bar, the Tree View has been added. If I scroll to the top of this Tree View, at the top are all the subsites under the home site. If I click an arrow, to the left of one of the sites, it expands to show me the content of that site, all their lists and libraries. And then I can click the arrow again to collapse that. Below all the subsites are the list and libraries and content for the site I'm currently on, which is the home site. This only adds the tree view to the site you're in at the time you select it. If I go to another site, scroll up top here and I'll click on Human Resources, Notice the tree view is not displayed. It would have to be turned on from within this site. So I'll return to the home site and then I'll return to site settings. 
and then I'll go back into tree view and turn the tree view off. The last option under look and feel is site theme. A theme changes the overall colors and fonts of a site. Currently it is set to the default theme. As you click on the different theme names on the right, the left hand side displays a grid of colors for that theme. It also shows you the colors of hyperlinks before and after they've been selected and the font style for headings and body font. So I'll leave this at laminate and then I'll choose apply. I'm returned to the settings screen and if I go to the home page you can see the new theme is here as well. However, this theme is only applied when I'm within the home site. As soon as I navigate to one of the other pages or sites, they have not been affected. They're still at the default theme. If you wanted all the sites to be uniform, then you would need to change the theme for each site and subsite. So to reset the theme for the home site, I'll go back to the home page, back to site action, site settings, under look and feel, I'll choose site theme. It's showing me currently the theme I'm using is laminate. And if I scroll all the way to the top of the list, I can choose default, which is no theme. And then I'll choose apply. And then I'm back to the regular default theme. So I'll return to site settings. And this time we're going to look at the gallery section. And we'll first take a look at site columns. Site Columns lets you manage the collection of columns available throughout the site when creating lists. This is the list of all the columns that come with SharePoint. You can add your own custom columns to make them available across your entire site. For example, let's say your company has several locations across the country. It is very likely on more than one site there is a need to add a company location column to a list. Rather than having to keep recreating the same column of locations for every list that needs it, that column can be created once as a site column, then it can be added to any list throughout the site. To create a site column that is available to all sites and subsites, you must start from the home site, which is where I am. At the top of the site column screen, click Create. First we give the column a name. So I'll call this Office Location. It will be a choice column. I want to add this new column to the custom columns group in site columns list. And then I'll enter the office locations in this box. And I do not want a default selection, so I'll delete that. And then I'll choose OK. So in the site columns page, go down through here, and it's added a category called custom columns, where it's added the column I've just created. So to demonstrate using it, I'm going to go to the employee directory list and I'm going to add a site location column because my employees in this list will be coming from any of the three office locations. So to show you how to add a site column to a list, I'll go up here to the list tab, I'll go to list settings, down in the column section here, I'll choose to add from an existing site column. The top here where it says select the column from which group. I'm going to select this from the custom columns and the column I just created is the only one in this group right now. I'll click on add to add it to the right and then I'll choose OK. So now you can see this column called office location has been added to this directory. I'll return back to the directory and here's the office location column. So I'll go in and edit one of the employee records and add the location for them. You see now the office location field is at the bottom. I click the drop down. Here are my choices. Since this column was added at the home site level, any of the subsites can now add this office location column to any list in their sites. Okay, so I'll return to the home page and we'll go back to site settings. And then we'll look at site content types. And this lets you manage the collection of content types, which enables consistent handling of content across the site. Not a whole lot you will do as an administrator with site content types. Just go back to the settings screen. Then I'll choose web parts. And this gallery is primarily for developers to store and retrieve web parts. And I'll return back to the settings. Next we'll go to list templates. And this is used to maintain a list of all the list templates created for your site. 
and here we see the FAQ list template created during the list template tutorial. So after a list template is created, come back to this list and I can click on this edit button. From here I can change the name of the template or I could delete it. Master Pages is used to define the general structure and layout of a SharePoint site page. Typically, you will get into that as a developer or designer using SharePoint Designer. The Theme Gallery stores themes for the site. Additional themes can be uploaded to this list to be made available to the site. And solutions would be primarily used by developers to add additional solutions or templates to the site. Next, we'll take a look at the Site Actions section. First, we'll take a look at Manage Site Features. And this area allows you to activate or deactivate features that provide additional functionality to your site. You can save a site as a template, very similar to what is demonstrated in the video titled Saving a List as a Template. Let's say you created a department site where you have done a good amount of customization with the layout, list metadata, and so forth. Rather than creating each new department site with the default layout and then having to repeat all of those actions to customize it, you can save a site that has already been customized as a new site template by clicking on this link. You give the template a name. If you choose include content, it will include not only the list but all the content within the list. After it's saved, you then have this new site template that can be reused when creating other department sites. When you select Site Collection Web Analytics Reports, this displays a report that provides summary information on how this site collection is being used. You can see the amount of disk space being used, how many users have been added to the site collection, and how often the site is being visited. Use the links in the descriptions for more detailed information. Next is the Site Web Analytics Report. This report shows the number of page views per day for the date range specified. Every time a user visit generates a server page request, a page view is recorded. Use this report to understand page view traffic load, see page view traffic patterns, or identify periods of high or low traffic. Please note that usage processing must be enabled in central administration in order to generate this report. If it's not enabled, the page will look like this. Let's say you went a little too far in customizing your site. This Reset to Site Definition link will reset the entire site back to the way it was when it was first created. It removes all customizations from the site. And Delete This Site does exactly that. It will delete the site you are currently on and any subsites. Next, we'll take a look at the Site Administration section. In the regional settings, use this to set up your site's regional area, time zone, define your work week, time format where you can choose between 12 and 24 hour format. Use language settings to set up different languages for the site. When you click on site libraries and lists, this is basically a shortcut to all of the content in the site you are in. From here, you can create a new list or library, or if you need to make any customizations to an existing list, click on the list name, which will take you to the settings screen for that particular list. Under user alerts, you can select a user from this drop-down list. This would show you any user who has created alerts on the site. You can also delete alerts for a user if necessary. The RSS option lets you enable or disable RSS feeds for the site collection. The search and offline availability Basically, this is where you can state whether you want this site to appear in search results, whether you want the ASPX pages to be indexed, and whether this site should be available for offline clients. The Sites and Workspaces option provides a site management view, providing a summary of sites, when they were last modified, the ability to delete a site, 
and you can also create a new site from here. If you click on a site name, it will show you the site contents. And the last two options, workflows and workflow settings, are for developers. And in this last section, site collection administration. So I'll select Recycle Bin. And as an administrator, I see what the end users see in their recycle bins from all sites and subsites combined into one list. The site an item was deleted from appears in this second column here under original location. And in the path, we can see that it was deleted from human resources or training, so on. In the upper left corner, I can choose a view called deleted from end user recycle bin. This displays items that have been in the end user recycle bin over 30 days, which no longer can be seen by the end user. Items in this list can be restored to the user site or permanently deleted. The site collection features is very similar to the site features in the site action section. These are features that can be made available for the entire site collection. Site Hierarchy gives you the ability to get a quick snapshot of all the sites you have created and their subsites along with their URLs. Use the Manage link to go to the site administration page for a specific site. The Portal Site Connection is used to create a connection to a portal site. Just type in the web address of the server. The SharePoint Designer Settings is used to manage the SharePoint Designer Settings for sites in the site collection. And down in the last option, Help Settings, this lets you choose which help collections of information you want to make available to the users. And that's it for the quick overview of site settings for administering your SharePoint site.